Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Myself, Dr. Akshay Kumar from the Republic of India. And the, uh, the presentation is on synthesis of highly water soluble nanostructured boron nitride uh, nanomaterials for anti cancer drug delivery. Basically, I am a material scientist and I work on structure property relations of materials. The motivation of this project is my homeland. A uh, district from Punjab, Bhatinda. That region is uh, uh, known as <coughs> cancer prone region because of excessive arsenic presence in uh, your groundwater. <coughs> so I took this project as a as a challenge. It's uh, synthesis of highly water soluble nanostructured materials. <coughs> Outline of my presentation is. So, this is introduction to boron nitride, its crystal structure, properties, comparison with your carbon allotropes, then what is boron neutron capture therapy, then comparison of various synthesis routes for synthesis of boron nitride, then proposed synthesis route and its advantages, then results and discussion. <coughs> Coming to structure, the structure of boron nitride is analogous to your uh, graphite, yeah, you can say that carbon. It's having hexagonal boron nitride, which is analogous to your uh, graphite, cubic boron nitride, similar to diamond, then rhombohedral boron nitride, again similar to an allotrope of carbon, and woodside boron nitride. <coughs> the beauty of this structure, or you can say the difference from carbon, it is having two uh, elements, boron and nitrogen, with electronegativity difference of about one. So, we can change or we can modify the structure. If, sorry, if we can modify the structure, the properties can modify. This is the main idea. Uh, when we see the properties, this boron and nitrogen, it is a covalent bond material. But when uh, we see the electronegativity difference, there is a possibility to change or you can say to uh, convert in, into polarized material so that uh, we can make it water soluble. Actually, uh, sorry, uh, these covalent materials are generally not water soluble. So, main idea is to make boronitide as water soluble material. This is uh, these are basic application of uh, boronitide, boronitide hexagonal boronitide, as I have already told. And these are the application parts. It is used good lubricant as. Uh, uh, we use graphite as lubricant and in cosmetic products as nanocarbon as uh, similar to nanocarbon as abrasive for biomedical application electrical insulation radiation shielding humidity sensing and defense application these two points biomedical application and radiation shielding i have uh, purposely highlighted because this uh, whole presentation is combination of this biomedical application and radiation shielding now coming to boron neutron capture therapy. What is boron neutron capture therapy? Basically, it is a cancer treatment therapy. You can cure cancer with uh, this therapy. Uh, oh, now next question is how it is different from the traditional uh, cancer treatment therapy. Basically, this BNCT is used in the body parts where this your uh, surgery is not possible. Suppose neck cancer and any other part of the body where surgery is not not possible. So there, BNCT is used. Now, what is the basic principle of BNCT? Interaction with electron or boron, or you can say, new, uh, sorry, neutron, not, uh, not electron, neutron with boron. When uh, neutron interact with boron, B10, it uh, is converted to B11, and then it uh, decays in lithium and alpha particles, and energy 0.48 MeV, 94% of gamma rays, and then the rest of uh, lithium. Now, how this energy help in BNCT or neutron capture therapy? This is the mechanism basically. Uh, yes, these alpha particles are energetic alpha particles. When these enter these alpha particle, this is first one carrier. Then your drug molecule we use this boronitride by targeted drug delivery. Then we inject. Uh, these particles in cancer cell then 
the, the last uh, point the carrier plus drug, drug delivery conjugate this is the region where interaction occurs and this is the interaction mechanism this uh, boron neutron sorry neutron interact with this boron nitride and inject alpha particles and this alpha particles kills this cancer cell now how it kills the size of this cancer cell is larger than the normal uh, normal uh, or healthy cells that's this is the main reason for killing mechanism now why nano boron nitride next question is why we are using boron nitride your nano boron nitride other coming to the cell membrane size these cell membranes are selective one if the size of the material injected inside is larger than a uh, certain size then they are rejected back if size is smaller than some uh, certain size then they can be injected that's why we are using or uh, using these nano boron nitride second is we need a limited minimum amount of drug inside the body so these two main reasons are uh, the reasons why we uh, we are uh, concentrating on nano boron nitride next the comparison uh, study of various synthesis routes we used uh, mechanically wall mill spray conversion process and chemical vapor synthesis route for synthesizing boron nitride there are the advantages and disadvantages in case of mechanical wall milling long process and contamination is the main problem although it is a straight forward process in case of spray conversion the purity is again a same uh, uh, limitation but it is a simple three step process coming to chemical vapor phase reaction it is a high pressure synthesis route and with high purity and high control over the size and reaction rate we can control the size by this synthesis route this is the methodology adopted by us we have you designed and specially desi designed an autoclave of ss304 to synthesize these uh, nanoparticles we have already filed the patent for it then we characterize these nanoparticles by fti tm then zeta size zeta potential xrd and biocompatibility studies are going on then we will study these uh, interaction of these neutrons with uh, your uh, neutrons with these particles and study the effect of size this is the characterized xrd uh, curve of boron nitride we can see that 002 plane is highly grown plane in this case now coming uh, left side that is a and c values for this hexagonal boron nitride actual and uh, this uh, calculated values for this sample actual is from jcpds card and this a and c values calculated is for this card or this uh, data there is a difference between a and c values we can see that there is a compressive strain in the crystal structure this is the uh, xrd for boron nitride nanoparticles dissolved in water we can see from this xrd that crystallinity is retained by this material it means that the material is not amorphous or not ionizing in the system it it retains its crystallinity now coming to this raman spectra there is a shift this uh, 1381 cm inverse this shift is towards higher wavelength and this shift shows us that the material is under compressive strain if the material is compressive under compressive strain what will happen or how it is related with the uh, solubility of the material see uh, let's think about structure of boron nitride it's a hexagonal layer of boron nitrogen boron nitrogen one above other and boron and neutron uh, sorry boron and nitrogen both are electronegative with the electronegativity difference of 1 so there is a positive and negative charge center and they will there will be having a center around which uh, at which this positive and negative charge uh, are um, neutralized you can say that so if there is a change in a value a change in c is c value it will affect this charge uh, nucleation uh, charge charge centers rather it will affect this charge centers and it will affect the solubility of the material so this is fti spectra which shows that the material is uh, boron nitride then this is size distribution this uh, size distribution study it was done uh, for uh, for uh, ethanol in ethanol rather and in water 
when the uh, boronitrite uh, particles are dissolved in ethanol the particle size was about 248 nanometers with zeta potential of 16.2 when these particles were dissolved in water the particle size was uh, sorry particle size was about 68 nanometer and the zeta potential was 50 minus 15.2 now what this zeta potential and particle size shows if the particles are dissolved in water then sorry in dissolved uh, dissolved in ethanol then they are agglomerated one if they are dissolved in water this separates out 248 and 68 there is a difference and this zeta potential shows that these particles are not stable not stable one as we all uh, know that nanoparticles with high surface energy or surface area they are not stable one this is dt of tg curve which shows that the particles nanoparticles are under room temperature they are stable up to 900 degree centigrade they don't react with any material even up to then rather uh, 1000 degree centigrade they don't react then these are the transmission electron microscopy it is uh, uh, it can be seen from, seen from this uh, ta micro micrograph that there are uh, like flakes just like graphene sheets they are wrapping to form carbon uh, sorry boronitride nanotubes these are uh, uh, wrapped uh, boronitride uh, nanotubes and they are not stable one as from uh, right side picture these are this can fecm micro uh, micrographs it shows that these boronitride are in the forms of flakes now coming to conclusion with that we can synthesize these boronitride nanoparticles or we can say that we can modify the structure by modifying the synthesis parameters this boronitride we can say that these are soluble in water because of its structure constraint uh, compressive strain in the structure and next one that uh, the hydrogen uh, liberated during the synthesis method as we have used uh, boric acid and ammonia as precursors so ammonia decomposes in hydrogen and uh, nitrogen with nitrogen is re nitrogen reacts with boron and to form boron nitride and hydrogen is responsible for particle size more is the hydrogen liberated lesser will the particle size the materials are stable up to 1000 degree centigrade and the present route can be used to synthesize for pure boron nitride the purity is the main uh, problem in this boron nitride bnct and this uh, this is perhaps this is solved now next is ongoing future project this is presently we are um, working on the biocompatibility study and neutron interaction uh, studies and that's all thank you very much from my side if you have some queries you can ask these are some micrographs Okay. Yeah, can you just explain? Yeah. yeah. Ma'am, actually, there is a range for zeta potential. Three range. Suppose uh, uh, potential range is from minus 15 to minus 30. It means material is highly unstable. Okay. Is it same for all materials? No, no, ma'am. It's, it's a it's a range. It's a range for highly unstable materials. Okay. Well, I know only for this uh, that minus 15 to 30, minus 13, 30, 30. Okay. If it is so. then it is highly unstable there is positive range also plus 15 to uh, plus 15 to plus 30 that may be uh, for highly stable and all that there there are basically we have three ranges this range is for highly uh, unstable materials the highly reactive you can say and about the exerted that you have got uh, is there any shift in the peak positions no there is no shift So Sorry, no. There was a shift. That's why there is a compressive strain. There was a uh, shift towards left. Okay. If there is a shift towards left, this is a compressive strain. If there is a shift toward right, it's tensile strain. Means in this case, material is compressed. A and C values are compressed because from this uh, uh, L lambda equals to 2 d sine theta, you can compare from that. If the d is inversely proportional to theta, if theta uh, is small. Then d the value will change. And you have done the strain plotting. Strain. Uh, yeah, actually we have done it, but we have uh, I have not shown it here uh -huh. because I think that is a regular practice. Uh -huh. We can only conclude a and c values. No, it's uh, how you got the value? Is it uh, you found it uh, in the lower value or higher value strain? 
Actually, com it's a compressive strain. Actually, uh, you can see this from I have tabulated it, and then my XRD. Uh, just a minute. Yes, I have. Oh, sorry. I have tabulated these A and C values. From this A and C values, suppose you are having a crystal structure. It's a hexagonal type structure. A, sorry, this is boron, nitrogen, boron, nitrogen, and it will form a hexagon. Then boron to nitrogen, this test is A. From this data, you can see that it is from 2.5, it is shifted to 2.08. It's a compressive strain. And C value, actually 6.612, it is shifted to 6.0205. So it is a compressive strain. C by A ratio and A C values. They all are responsible for the properties of the material. Thank you. So, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.